Shalom. Kohlein la Yahweh. Bahashem. Yahweh Shai. Bahashem. Or Kankadash. All praises be to the Most High. Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior. Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that was scattered abroad. Double honor respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. Resisting the power. <clears throat> Resisting the power. So I really didn't have a topic. But the Holy Spirit jumped on me to address the will and power of the Almighty. And the short answer is, no one can resist the Heavenly Father. We are all led by either a right hand or a left hand spirit. So the spirit of truth, it will flourish and it will force us or compel us to do the will on the right hand side, which starts with teaching the doctrine and abiding within the confines of the doctrine or the fruits of the spirit, doing what the Most High commands us to do. So the answer is no one can resist the Heavenly Father. He controls the left and right hand. But we're either led by a dark left hand spirit or a righteous spirit. Let's go here to the additions to Esther 4 and 10. Additions to Esther 4. Let's go to verse 9. Let's go to 8. Then Mordecai thought upon all the works of the Lord and made his prayer unto him, saying, O Lord, Lord, the King Almighty, for the whole world is in thy power. And if thou hast appointed to save Israel, there is no man that can gainsay thee. See, so this is a, a power, a spirit of truth which is the will of the Heavenly Father. Verse 10, For thou hast made heaven and earth and all the wondrous things under the heaven. Thou art Lord of all things, and there is no man that can resist thee, which are the Lord. So, we are being guided and directed by a council. So when the man has a fiery spirit on him to teach, to preach, to prophesy, to interpret, that spirit is given from him, that spirit is given to him from the Almighty. <laughs> Let's go to um, James 1 and 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. See? So this is a force that we cannot resist. So it's, it's a sign or a signature mark when someone has a spirit of sloth. That is a dark left-hand spirit that brings down kingdoms, that tears down the brethren. It sucks the life out of the body of work. See? Let's go to James 3. I kept talking and give me more time to find it. <laughs> James 3. Let's go to verse... Yeah, let's go to verse 13 who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you. Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. See, 
So the Almighty puts his fingerprints on his people, starting with the men that are endowed with this heavenly message, the doctrine. But if ye have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. Say what? Lie not against the truth. So we have strict commandments to follow. The Most High is not going to deviate from his will, his doctrine. And a part of that is to teach and meditate daily on the divine message. Matter of fact, let's read this first. James 3 and 15. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. That's the left hand. So someone that is not exhibiting the fruits of the spirit, which is charity, teaching, they're being driven by a spirit of sloth or envy and pride and strife which tears down and does not build up a kingdom. So part of the commandments goes back to Moses. There's one specifically that I like here. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, see, let's go here. Deuteronomy 4, verse 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments even as the Lord God, my God, commanded me. Let's read it again. Deuteronomy 5 and 5. So this is a commandment to teach. And we're supposed to do this. We'll get it from the scriptures. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord, my God, commanded me that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So it's a part of our heritage to teach and to be diligent, to not relent or let up. <clears throat> See, let's keep going <clears throat> right here. To be diligent, that was the spirit. Deuteronomy 6, verse 6, and these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, in our mind, the Hebrew word lob, in our heart. So it's, this is like oxygen we're breathing in, the breath of life. See that? So the, the heart or the mind cannot operate without the breath of life. That's driving that. Deuteronomy 6 and 7, And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shall talk of them, when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up. So it is a commandment to teach daily. That is a commandment. <clears throat> Let's keep going. So that diligence is like flowing rivers that do not stop. We can drink from flowing rivers. It's full of life. I don't want to go from there. Yeah, let's go to Job. I'm going to try to get through this quickly. Job 33. Yeah, Job 33 and 3. My word shall be of the uprightness of my heart, and my lips shall utter knowledge clearly making the Lord's word plain upon tables. We do this through these daily epistles, and we show pictures, videos, photos. So the brothers are making things plain. Verse 4, The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty 
have given me life. Beautiful. So we cannot function without the breath of life. We cannot interpret the Lord's messages. We cannot decipher the code. We cannot teach or be fervent or on fire without his Holy Spirit. This is why when somebody is slothful, they're carrying a left-hand spirit. So we're supposed to be separate from them. Or if they're teaching the wrong doctrine, that's not of the divine right hand. We're supposed to be separate from them and mark them and separate ourselves from them. <clears throat> Let's keep going. Job 40 and 7. Gird up thy loins now like a man. I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. So part of being a man is doing what's of the most high's divine spiritual will. Not wrestling or resting judgment. Wrestling judgment. Not, let's, let's get that. Don't rest judgment. Because if we're in the flesh, then we're no different from the people of the world. Let's get it. Rest judgment. I think it's. Let's get rid of the E. Yep. See right here. Exodus 23 and 2. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many. To rest judgment. See, so if we're not grounded in the spirit of truth, then we're going to try to cut corners. We're going to try to be what you call it. Um, what's that term we use here, out here in, in the world? We're going to try to be um, lubby dubby. That lubby dubby feeling. We're not walking in the spirit, but what we can see or the flesh. So we take on this weird clickish mindset. You know, no, notice, don't follow a multitude. See, so we get like a lubby-dubby worldly attraction rather than be drawn by the spirit. Thou shall not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shall thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. Verse 6, Exodus 23 and 6. Thou shalt not rest the judgment of thy poor in his cause. And then finally, Deuteronomy 16 and 19. Thou shalt not rest judgment. Thou shalt not respect persons, neither take a gift. For a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise and pervert the words of the righteous. So those that are not working and meditating through a spiritual eye or lens are easily seduced and help to seduce others. They become an infectious disease, contagious to be slothful or to be perverted in judgment and wisdom. That's infectious and it spreads to help tear down and not build up or not edify. False doctrine tears down, so does slothfulness. <clears throat> so girding up our loins like a man is not resting judgment. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them, that love him. So we're working for an eternal kingdom, immortality. If we believe that, then our labors are going to reflect that do our fervent diligence. It's going to reflect that we believe in an eternal kingdom to come through our labors. Verse 10, but God have revealed them unto us by his 
spirit, for the spirit search of all things, yea, the deep things of God. So Job said the Almighty have given him that spirit of life. So the spirit is going to motivate us, inspire or breathe in life, in, which is in, and then that spirit or breath, inspire or motivate us. Because we can visualize, we have a vision through our third spiritual eye to see the kingdom being promised. So we're putting in some hard effort in order to make our calling and election sure. Let's go to verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. So the divine spiritual vision is so vivid that it makes brothers become very, very aggressive in the teaching. Imagine being told you can have something. It's promised to you. So you're going to do whatever it takes to get your reward that's been promised. You're like, that's mine. So I'm going to push hard to reach the finish line, to accomplish the goal. Imagine being written in a will where you're going to inherit a billion dollars, but there's a certain list of requirements you must do. You're not going to have to be reminded to meet those gates or objectives or requirements. Are you kidding me? So this precious treasure of immortality and rulership is much more precious. Let's go to verse 12. 1 Corinthians 2 and 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Beautiful. So we're able to visualize these things, being able to hover, being able to walk through buildings and doors, being able to make fire come down from heaven, being able to subdue our enemies, being able to live forever and not get sick. These things are vivid in our mind. And if our faith is strong enough, we're given visions, we're given little snapshots or snippets of the kingdom to come. Let's go to verse 13. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Spirit teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So the Holy Spirit helps to show us these things where we can taste it, we can feel it deep down, deep within our soul because of our faith. So imagine being so close to the finish line that you can see it, you can smell it and taste it. So all senses are being engaged or activated. To be that close to the kingdom, knowing that the end is near and the rebirth of Jacob is at the forefront. Let's go here. Get ready to close out. First Corinthians 13. Let's go to verse 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man... I put away childish things. So I'm trying to rest judgment and just cohabitate because we know we're Jake's. That's not walking in the spirit. That's walking in the flesh. Letting up and not being diligent and thinking we're going to get a free pass because we're Israelites. That's being carnal. We're not going to get free chicken. Let's read this again in Job 33. No, Job 40 and 7. Job 
40 and 7. Gird up thy loins now like a man. I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. So a man is not moved or manipulated by a woman. It's not going to change doctrine because of an in-law that's not an Israelite. It's not going to be moved because of his emotional, sentimental feelings and opinions. Growing up with a, with a Jake and therefore having bias or trying to cater to a Jake because he's, his pockets are deep. Then that is a male prostitute whoring after mammon or other gods because they're easily seduced or manhandled by women, children, and men of false perverted doctrines. What you would call a man whore. So we're not supposed to be childish, if you will, but sincere, firm, unmovable, and standing for truth's sake. <clears throat> Let's go here. First Kings 2. And we'll get ready to close out. First Kings 2 and 1. Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die. And he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. No, we're going to just continue to put baby bibs around brothers' necks and a dead pacifier. You know, unbelievable, unbelievable. So the Lord has said, who will rise up for me against the evildoers? And who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? That takes anchors, pillars in this building of the Lord's temple. Pillars must be firm, strong, unmovable, not BMMs. And I've broken down that acronym before, BMM. Look it up. That's a weak man raised by Big Mom and Big Shirley wearing a damn orange bonnet and a shower curtain for a dress, all right? Bug out of their damn mud. These men are very easily manipulated by their feelings and sentimental, emotional opinions of the world. <clears throat> 1 Kings 2 and 1 again. Now in the days of David drew nigh that he should die. And he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. So the Spirit led me to go to Deuteronomy 6. Well, get it again to refresh our memories. Deuteronomy 6. See, right here. Verse 6. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. This truth should be in our mind. Or the Hebrew word lob. Let's go to verse 7, the key point. So King David referenced this from Moses. Deuteronomy 6 and 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. That is a daily battle rhythm, or a daily regiment. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. So we're living looking and breathing the words of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, and thinking about his word as the oxygen that we intake. What if somebody held off our oxygen, our life source, or the breath? 
we would die in place of the truth really is the same, essentially. It's the breath of life, isn't it? Yes, we read that in our Job chapter 33. So we're either led by a left hand, slothful or perverted spirit, or we're directed and guided by the counsel of angels on the right hand. Point blank, period. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, or Kankadash. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yasharala and the Bad the Ba. We got next. Lord willing. Shalom.